So this question says, if the magnitude of the positive charge is tripled, what is the ratio of the original value of the electric field at a point to the new value of the electric field at that same point? So what this question wants us to remember is the equation for an electric field due to a point charge, right? So if you forget that, it's just the Coulomb's law, which is equal to k times q1 times q2 over r squared, but it's divided by that second q, right? Because an electric field emanates from a single uh, charge formation, okay? So a single charge distribution. So and in this case, we're going to use that equation kq over r squared, right? So if it says we're at the same point, which is important in this problem, uh, we're not changing r. k is obviously a constant, so the only thing that we're changing is q, and we're tripling it, right? So that, that new electric field is going to be three times as strong, so our answer is going to be b. All right, 74. A 7 newton force and an 11 newton force act on an object at the same time. Which of the following cannot be the magnitude of the sum of these forces? All right, so if you have two forces acting on an object, there is a maximum and a minimum net force you can get, okay? And you'll achieve these maximums when the force basically isn't angled, when they're being applied at the center of mass of an object uh, at not an angle to the center of mass, okay? So the maximum it could be is obviously when you add the two together. So maximum is 18 newtons, and the minimum would be 4, right? 11 minus 7. So the f net force could be anywhere between 4 and 18. Um, anything above 18 and below 2 wouldn't work, right? So A would be the answer. 75. A student plans to add HCl to a solution containing PbNO32 aqueous. To determine how much PV2 plus will preci precipitate from solution when HCl is added, the student needs to know which of the following. All right. So A says the Ka for HCl. Uh, we actually know that HCl uh, is a strong acid, so uh, we don't really need a Ka for HCl. We know that it's going to dissociate completely. So B says Ka for HNO3. Um, the important thing to know is that we don't even care about NO3, right? Um, we're not even adding HNO3 to solution. Uh, we're adding, uh, we, we have NO3, and it's kind of like a spectator ion here. So we don't need to worry about that, right? C says the KSP for PBCL2. And yes, that's important, right? Because we, we need that KSP to see how much exactly we'll get uh, precipitated, how much P PBCL2 we'll get. And that's just based on the energetics of uh, the, the reaction between the chloride, which is going to be free in solution once we drop in some hydrochloric acid, and the uh, PB2+, plus, which dissociates from the NO3 2 once you uh, drop it in water. So we're going to pick C as our answer. All right, 76. A block of weight W is pulled across a rough floor by a rope that exerts a force T on the block. The frictional force between the floor and the block is F. Which of the following expressions equals the frictional force F when the block moves with a constant speed? Okay, so when a block moves with constant speed, that tells you that the acceleration is zero, okay? So if the acceleration on, of an object is zero, then we know that the net force on an object is zero, according to uh, Newton's second law, right? F equals ma if a is equal to zero, f net is equal to zero. All right, so basically that means that all the, some of the forces in the horizontal direction are going to be equal, um, and the, some of the forces in the vertical directions are going to be equal to each other, obviously the ones that are opposite, right? So the only horizontal forces that we're seeing here are one due to F, the frictional force, which is what we're looking for, and one component of that T right here, okay? So this T is applied at an angle, which means that it can be split up into vector components. So we're going to have one that's going to the right, and then another one that's going up, right? So let me, maybe I can draw that in here. Where's my arrow function? Okay. So we're going to have one that goes this way, all right? And we have another that goes straight up. And these are the vector components, OK? So 
But the only ones that we're worried about are these horizontal ones, right? Because um, that's the one that's in the same direction as the frictional force, okay? And we said that the net force on this object in all directions, right, the x and the y directions is zero, right? Which would mean that this force right here, which is pointing to the left, would be equal to this force, which is pointing to the right. And the magnitude of this force is just t times cosine of theta, right? So that means that t cosine theta is equal to f, and our answer is d. All right, 77. When an element undergoes beta decay, a nuclear neutron is converted into a nuclear proton as a nucleus emits an electron. So I know this question actually gives you the description of beta decay, but I wouldn't count on getting that description if you ever encounter this problem, this type of problem again. So uh, memorize the different types of decay, alpha, beta, stuff like that. It's definitely, I mean, you might not see it on your exam, but it could be there, so you should know it. What happens to the atomic number and atomic mass of an element that undergoes beta decay? All right, so this one's pretty easy, right? So we know, what do we know? We know that protons and neutrons have approximately the same mass, and electrons, obviously they have a mass, but with respect to atoms, you know, adding or removing an electron isn't going to really change anything. The, the mass of an electron is, I think, on the order of minus 31, 10 to the minus 31. So... If you're converting a neutron to a proton, you know, we said that they're both approximately 1 AMU. So we're not changing the mass there. Okay, and if you're emitting an electron, we're, for the most part, not changing the mass, right? But what we do when we convert a neutron to a proton is that we're increasing the atomic number, right? The atomic number is defined by the number of protons we have in a specific atom. So we would be increasing the atomic number due to that conversion to a proton but we wouldn't really be changing the mass. So let's look for that answer choice. A says the atomic number increases, but the atomic mass stays approximately the same. All right, so that's the answer we're looking for.